everybody, this is Dr. Joe Borio with this week's Thought Flash. Uh, I wanted to show you a shirt that I'm wearing from one of our new clients. We've got so many new clients that have uh, joined us in the last uh, few weeks. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty overwhelming. And uh, uh, special thanks goes out to um, William Moss for inviting me out to uh, Cal Jam this last year. but we're also really about uh, showing people how to grow their practice uh, successfully. Uh, I still practice, uh, and that certainly doesn't knock any coach that's not, but, but you, can, you can really feel confident to know that what I tell you to do, what I show you to do, I'm doing. And my practice uh, you know, at its height was, was one of the busiest practices on the planet, and uh, it seemed you know, high value for many, many years. And, and with that, we had a high level of service families that are members of our practice and we just had seen so many people in, in day after day uh, of people that really wanted to get healthy, that really wanted to improve their nervous system, that really wanted to uh, get their families healthy and that the majority of them, certainly not every one, but the majority of them are there for the right reasons. That yeah they know that back and neck pain can be caused by misalignment but they're also there through, through a lot of work and education so that their nervous system stays healthy and that the health of their spine is maintained throughout their lifetime. And that's really what creates stability in your practice. Not no fault, not workers' comp, not insurance-based, not, not Medicare, but certainly we have those people in our office. But what we are really is, is a practice that's a culmination of, of true wellness, true health care. Um, so that being said, uh, it's a really neat shirt by uh, Dr. Uh, Kyle Stahl, and, and when you look at it, it goes through uh, uh, really the, the, the problems with medication, that I took an aspirin uh, to take care of uh, pain caused by my Zyrtec, or a headache, which then led to other problems with my stomach, which I then took Zyrtec for my allergies, and it just goes on and on and on. It's pretty, pretty true as to where we are in, in the medical profession. Um, I really think that we as chiropractors should stay out of that the paradigm of medicine, but I, I think once we start stepping into medic, medication, medicine, if you will, I think you run into problems. So I think what we really need to stand tall on and stand firm on is the paradigm of medicine, meaning that to render treatment for, which means it has a beginning and an end, for uh, uh, addressing symptomatology of disease is not true wellness. And our paradigm is that we want to involve ourselves before disease even begins. We want to involve ourselves at the dis-ease, at the dis ease at the loss of ease, the loss of tone, the loss of communication, the loss of illumination, the loss of communication and data and signals that illuminate the body, that, that give commands to the body right at the cellular structure, right at the DNA. Innate exists within all cells of the body. Innate exists in all living tissue of the body. But its command center, its life force, life, so life source, quantity, quality, using words of BJ, that, that emanate or, or would illuminate or originate from, from brain and nervous system. So it's our body to ensure that the afferent, efferent communication of body is not only brought back to its quantity 100% and quality 100%, or certainly as high as that it can be, but then maintained at that level. And that's really where medicine misses the boat uh, because they don't get into maintenance uh, of wellness. They initiate treatment after wellness, after disease has been lost. And what does that cause? That's caused medicine to be the leading cause of death in the United States. That's caused prescription drugs and non prescription drugs to be the number one cause of disease in the United States, or number one cause, I'm sorry, of, of death in the United States. Uh, we're on the wrong approach. We just heard from a new study that came out that hospital um, malpractice uh, incidents are 10 times higher than originally reported because everything's underreported. And it was a new study came out by the government. So that's, again, even scarier. Uh, the number one reason to die in the hospital is a no nosocromial infection, which is a, 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 an infection typically caught by you being in the hospital. So our job is to prevent people from ever going to the hospital. That doesn't mean you should never go, but our job is to allow the body to work and regulate and function just like it was intended to. 
So if we facilitate nature's ability to heal, if we facilitate nature's ability to uh, communicate to the body, then the body should, in most cases, do what it's supposed to do. Certainly you can dabble with, and I say dabble, I don't mean that disrespectfully, you can dabble with nutrition and exercise. By that, handing out sheets and recommending certain things, I think that's great. But I think the minute you start putting on a hat of, a, I'm a nutritionist, um, or I'm an exercise kinesiologist or what have you, you are diluting what chiropractic is and you're going to confuse what chiropractic is. You know, one of the examples I always use is orthodontist. If you went to an orthodontist and you're, you're laying on, lying on a chair, I'm an orthodontist, let's say, for example, and I'm lying on uh, uh, or leaning over a table straightening somebody's teeth and they start asking me about their knee or how much vitamin C they should take or, or uh, probiotics or whatever, you know, the orthodontist is going to look at them kind of crazy. And uh, unfortunately, I think out of our own insecurity, we feel like we have to be the, the doctor doctor, the, the doctor of all for, for people that we render care for. And that isn't true. I, I think what we really need to be is certainly first, the best at, with full clarity, with 100% clarity, is a chiropractor. And a chiropractor is an individual, a healthcare practitioner, that is a specialist in identification of spinal illness, if you will, subluxation, misalignments, juxtapositions, loss of position, loss of proper mobility uh, in the spine for one purpose, for the main cause of loss of afferent, efferent flow, uh, or innate to flow and illuminate uh, throughout the body. That is the job of a chiropractor. So, when you read some of these books, you know, uh, these books I love to read, A uh, Giant versus Pygmy, uh, and what it talks about is thoughts. It's, it's actually a large book. I talked a little bit about it uh, a couple of weeks ago, but it was actually a, a series of brochures. There was a couple of brochures. That's the original that um, that uh, BJ had that uh, Fred Barge put together. And, uh, you know, is there a true is there a true chiropractic philosophy? Yes. And, is, and there are no alternatives. And when you... Chiropractic is, chiropractic is, regardless of what the 50 states say it is. You know, so we have to understand that chiropractic is what it is, and that's what BJ was trying to tell us. You know, certainly our ability um, to practice is defined and given privilege to by the states. And, uh, you know, my hat goes off to a lot of those men and women that practice chiropractic, or all of them uh, that practice chiropractic prior to, prior to licensure. You know, chiropractic is a beautiful It also implies treatment. Healing arts implies treatment. Chiropractic is so much like uh, dentistry as a dental hygienist. We, we are these, we are these um, uh, shepherds of true wellness. We are shepherds of true innate. We are people that understand that chiropractic is for the purpose of sustaining and maintaining proper flow of, of nutrition, if you will, nutrition for the brain. To allow every function of the body, those trillions of cells, right on that cellular level, to function at their utmost, so that the body doesn't make too little or too much of anything, so the body works exactly like it's supposed to. And as deep as that may be for some of us philosophically, how does that um, um, relate to day-to-day -day practice? Well, real simple, day-to-day -day practice is what you say. You know, your tongue is your rudder. What you say is so powerful, I think we forget. I think another mistake we make is that, um, and I, I'm certainly somebody that talks a lot, I talk fast, and I, I think early on I felt though felt as though if I talked a lot, meaning if I gave them more and more information, they would get it. And I realized in years passing that you're better off being more scripted. Some people resist that, and I can understand that. If you don't want to say exactly the same thing, you certainly have to have a theme of what you say. You should have an opening and close and a body of what you say so that you're relaying information that is not dependent upon how you feel that day or how busy you are in your practice that day. It's very important to have some concise uh, information that you can articulate with clarity and repeat that clarity every time you see someone new. you got to remember, it may be your thousandth time to say it. It's their first time to experience it. So you want to make sure what you say has the same impact. And certainly what's nice about staying tight around a script is that if an individual, uh, a practitioner, 
uh, is busier or slower or having a good, be in a good mood or bad mood or bad things are happening in the practice that day or whatever, and we've all had those days, uh, it doesn't impact on the patient or the member of the practice, the first experience, it doesn't jeopardize their understanding of the principle of what we do as chiropractors. Uh, and I think that's so vital. Uh, listen, guys, as chiropractors, uh, we really have something that's so unique, uh, that's so beautiful, that's so true, that's so perfect. Uh, in a form of sustaining wellness to the body that no one else has. And it's something that really needs to be protected. It needs to be understood. It needs to be honored. It's something that you need to submerge yourself in regularly reading these books. I've got uh, Dr. Joe Strauss's book on philosophy. I mean, just a, just a great book that goes through some really deep uh, understandings of chiropractic. And I love Dr. Strauss's way of putting things because he, he, he puts those nuts and bolts of practice in his philosophy book, which is kind of how I, I think and work. And, uh, and I love that. So I really relate well to Dr. Strauss's uh, writings. Uh, but, you know, grab those books. Those, those men and women are still with us, and you can read, a, read about their thoughts every day, and it really allows you to have a deeper understanding of what chiropractic is. Th those people in your office aren't going to be chiropractors, so you need to use models and props, if you will, in certain ways to communicate to them uh, the principle of what chiropractic is, and you need to do it every day. But as us, we, we as practitioners, we need to be great at what we do, so much higher than any other healthcare professional because we get beat up out there more than anybody you know we get we get challenges on our licensure and, our, and we get challenges on our our protocols and procedures every day and, and you see a big brother coming down on uh, health plans and big brother coming down and on, on, on trying to do family fees and so forth I mean you know a dentist does family fees every day and no one seems to have a problem with that but a chiropractor says hey look if you bring two or three family members in, we're gonna give you a break and all of a sudden the government's all over that I mean there really is a war on what we do as chiropractors unfortunately by many of the chiropractors and that that's really a, a reflection of their own insecurity of what they uh, are as chiropractors you know it'd be great to come out and hang a shingle and everybody love you but boy, I'll tell you uh, that's not the case with chiropractors you're probably gonna be loved deeper and, and more respected by a group of people than than any other practitioner but at the same time you're also gonna have a group of enemies out there or people who dislike you uh, unfortunately some of them are chiropractors more than any other healthcare profession as well so that's where this comes into play that's your rituals and um, and staying focused and staying on point and as I share with you my dad has always told me try to put the thoughts and interests of those you serve ahead of your own and you, you'll all you'll always be in good uh, exchange with the universe. He didn't. He didn't say it that way, but he said you'll always be successful. But the more I understand it, I realize there's a there's an exchange going on with the universe and those universal laws that we really don't understand, but we we certainly can identify that they exist. And I think that's uh, that's vitally important. Um, guys, I want you to make sure you you love your family, kiss the loved ones in your life, and hug hug the children in your life, and uh, and stay close to those that are dear. And um, and I think that's really important, especially we're coming up on an Easter season, and it's a good time to reflect on those people that are most important in your life. That's something I did a couple weeks ago. I actually wrote down a list of, of the people that I was actually thankful for in my life, and it, and it, was, a, it, was, a nice, um, it was a nice moment. I, you, sometimes you forget about all those wonderful, great people. I was at Panera today, had a cup of coffee, and I ran into Terry, who's such a, a sweet, dear patient of mine. She's been coming in for 15 years. I see her every other week for wellness care and she just gave me a big hug and a kiss and introduced me to everybody and it was just it was just a really nice moment so I hope you guys share those moments as well share some wonderful moments with your family during this holiday season and Passover season and, um, and for those that don't uh, practice any specific religion uh, certainly uh, dip yourself in in the in the understanding and the metaphysical understanding of of what BJ tried to tell us and that there is a intelligence that's so much far greater than all of us and, and we are uh, we're an existence of that intelligence every day. It truly is a gift. Guys, have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful holiday season. May your name flow from above now. Have a great week. My best friend gave me the best advice. He said each day.